everyone, welcome to Pineapple Knits, a knitting and spinning video cast. I'm Marina, and you can find me everywhere on the web at Pineapple Yarn, especially Instagram where I'm most active. And you can visit my hand dyed yarn, fiber, and candle company at pineappleyarn.com. Thanks so much for joining me again this week, and if this is your first time viewing the podcast, welcome. I'd love if you would subscribe to it so you don't miss an episode. I'm coming to you today from the coastal region of South Carolina, where I live with my husband and a house full of kids. <laughs> and as always, thank you so much for joining me, and I'm just so happy that you've taken the time out of your day to chat about knitting and spinning and other fiber related goodies. I also wanted to say hello to all of the new viewers who might be coming over here uh, via the Knitty Natty podcast channel. Um, I'm so happy that you're here and it's so fun because Natalie reached out to me a little while ago and asked if I wanted to do kind of a Q&A with her and a collaboration video and of course I said yes because I love her podcast and her positive attitude. She's just such a joy to watch and her enthusiasm about crochet and knitting is it's just palpable. It's so exciting and it always gets me really excited to craft and she is just such a great positive influence. I love watching her podcast. So hi Natalie if you're watching and I will be answering all those questions at the end of the podcast. And yeah, so it's been a really, really nice week here. It's been so sunny and I just, that's my kind of weather. I just love it. Um, it's still not super, super hot, but since it's the beginning of June, I'm okay with that. <laughs> but yeah, I really haven't had a lot of crafting time this week. Um, I had a really, really good friend come and visit. So a lot of my time has been spent with her and her family, and it's just been so wonderful. And uh, my son is, uh, who's two, he just turned two, and he has just really done a lot of napping strikes lately so a lot of my time has been spent with him because he is a tornado through the house no kidding he is quite the force but let me go ahead and show you um well i'll show you first of all what i'm drinking i am just drinking lacroix limoncello i talked about this on a previous podcast I really, really love this flavor. It's not like regular lemon. It almost has like a little bit of vanilla in it. It's just a richer lemon flavor. But if you really want, you know, a beachy, fresh drink that doesn't have any sweeteners in it at all, even, you know, natural sweeteners, nothing. It has no kind of sweeteners. This is really, really good because it has a lot of flavor in it. And so I'm loving it. It's so good. And I guess I'll move on to what I'm wearing. It basically matches my can here. <laughs> this is my Sunshine Coast sweater by Heidi Kermeyer, and I knit it in my yarn, pineapple yarn, in the Summer DK base, and the colorway is Saturn. So I am really still loving this sweater. It's so practical for this time of year um, because now it's too warm to wear it outside, but if I go somewhere that's over air conditioned, it's perfect. So, so that is what I'm wearing for the podcast today. But I'm gonna move on to what I've been knitting and this has been my exclusive, is my dotted raised shawl. I think I'm on week four of it, but it's getting big. I haven't put on a lot of progress with it so far and I'm holding it upside down. It's worked from, from the top down. So it's so big that my cable here doesn't even hold it all. But this is the top of it. I'm using my end of the day number 38 pack, which is, it was a, fe a speckled fade set. And it was made up of six 50 gram skeins. And so these are the colors. This was kind of a one of a kind series. I made a, I don't know how many of these sets I actually dyed up, but my end of the day colorway sets are all leftover dye. So I don't have 
you know, containers full of dye. A lot of times I have like this much dye in a container or, um, you know, I water some down to get different, just to get different effects. But yeah, they just always make the most beautiful colorways. I actually just dyed up an end of the day colorway for my upcoming shop update. And I used maybe 20 different colors of dye, which is so crazy, but it turned out really, really beautiful. So yeah, this um, shawl is the dotted raised shawl. It's just the original pattern. There are several different variations, but this is just the regular dotted raised. I'm not fading the colors together. I'm just knitting them as they are because I really wanted that kind of wedge effect that um, kind of emphasizes the construction of the pattern. And so far I'm loving it. I was actually going to, uh, I was going to weigh this before I started. This is my giant cake of yarn I have been working from and it is still really, really massive. <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully I'll get some really good progress in on this in the next week because as much as I am loving knitting it, um, I don't know how y how much y'all love seeing it every week. I <laughs> know it, it really is just so fun for me and I know that I'm not making a lot of visual progress on it, but it's still really a lot of fun. So this is what I worked on a lot this week. I wanted to, uh, I'm kind of in a mess here. Um, I wanted to work quite a bit on my spinning this week and if I wasn't in the middle of a a large knitting project, I would be spinning all the time. I've really wanted to be doing a lot of spinning, which is just great. But I picked up a braid that I had had in my stash for a while. It was from Greenwood Fiber Works. The color was Hawaii, I think. And I wanted to do a true three ply. And I really love how this turned out. This was a beautiful blend of Superwash Merino and Stellina. So it has lots of really pretty sparkle in it, some deeper shades. I'm gonna stand up and give you a closer look. So it's not completely even, but I'm gonna be honest, this is probably one of the most consistent spins I've done in a really long time. You can tell my ties are made from my hand dyed yarn because it's neon. <laughs> but yeah, this was just a joy to spin. It was really such a joy. And I'll tell you why, because when I unbraided the fiber, I never purchased yarn um, or spun yarn from this company before. And when I started using this fiber, it was like a dream to spin. I've never used fiber that was just ready to spin right off the braid. I mean, usually you have to do quite a bit of prep, not quite a bit of preparation, but you could do a lot of preparation when you are ready to spin some fiber. This fiber, and I, I later went to their shop and I will link it below. Um, but what they do is they pre-draft all of their fiber. And so, as you can imagine, when I went to spin this, it was so soft and pillowy. And I, I divided it into thirds. So they weren't narrow strips, they were just thirds. I, I don't know what the word is. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't have to pre-draft this. I didn't divide it into thin strips. I didn't, this this fiber was just a dream. And I'm sure you could see when this was up, up really close to the camera, but it just has these beautiful saturated tones of teals and purples and kind of a dusty blush pink. And so it's a really pretty, it's muted, but you can tell all three of the plies. I mean, it was just, it was just so beautiful. And 
because it was pre-drafted, it was just so much easier to maintain a consistent spin. And so I couldn't be happier with this. I ended up, it ends up being about a worsted, I would say. Um, it's like, I think I had 180 yards per, well, it was about 100 grams. Um, the whole braid itself was four grams, but I guess I just didn't spin as consistently as I thought I did <laughs> because I have this little mini hank left over that um, I'm, it may have been the way I was actually plying as well because one of my three bobbins um, ran out quite a bit ahead of the other two and the other two were um, they were very much the same uh, lengths I guess and so I have this little mini hank left over of um, a fiber and I would say this is probably 20 grams or so. So I think that would put the other one at about 100 grams. I haven't weighed it yet. I really need to get my scale out and do this. But even this, when I was spinning or plying this together, and this was just two strands, this is just a two ply, this was very, very consistent. And so I am so impressed by this fiber. It's just beautiful. And um, it was a new to me, I, I, it was a new to me company. I'm sure they've been around for quite a while, but, and maybe in like local yarn shops, things like that. Um, but if you are in the market for some fiber that it just is a very enjoyable spin, I would definitely check them out. And I should add that my spinning wheel is a Kromsky Minstrel. I put a link below in case you're interested in checking it out. I love that wheel. I've only owned one wheel, and so I guess it's a good thing I love it. <laughs> but it is a um, double drive wheel, and that's why I wanted to get it. So um, yeah, this was a great spin. But other than that, that is it. I have been um, knitting washcloths and my, I think the past two podcasts um, kind of go into more detail about that. That's been my go-to knitting uh, going on the beach, but I'm still working on my pink washcloths. So <laughs> I just decided not to show them today, um, which is fine. Maybe when I accumulate a whole stack, I'll show you. But those are kind of my go-to beach outdoor knitting because they're cotton and they're really easy to knit in the heat and humidity. So for shop news, I am having a shop update this Friday, June 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern time at pineappleyarn.com. And I will be having a shop update preview video if you want to take a look at some really beautiful yarn and you know I, I love looking at yarn so those are always such a treat for me to watch from other makers I love it check out the video I linked below and then it's also on my channel as well but yeah this week I dyed up um, I will have some restocks of some colorways that I normally carry and then I also dyed up a few new colorways so that was really really fun and I was extra busy, basically doubly busy <laughs> this week in the shop because I dyed up all of your club colorways as well. So right after this podcast, I will actually be rinsing and drying all of those colorways and they were so much fun to dye up this month. And I so appreciate all of your pre-orders and supporting my shop that way it really means so much to me. So thank you so much for your orders. I still have the advent calendar pre-order up. So if you're interested in an advent calendar this year, I know some larger makers have already sold out of theirs, but mine will probably stay open for probably, I mean, several more months. So that is available and July's club colorways are also up right now. I'm going to answer some questions now. Uh, the questions that were submitted by Natalie from the Nitty Natty podcast. And this is so fun. I'm so excited to do this. <laughs> so uh, the first question is, what colorway are you most well known for? And I don't know if I have one colorway that's just like um, exploded in popularity. I know some indie dyers are kind of found by a certain colorway that just 
explodes in popularity. And I don't really know if I have one colorway that's done that. Um, but I did bring a couple, actually. I have, I have a couple in stock that have been um, some of my older colorways and that have been really popular and um, I think maybe because I, I came up with them when I lived in Hawaii, so that might have been part of it. <laughs> but the first one is Electric Beach and um, this is actually a name of a beach in Hawaii because it is next to um, an electric plant that has, I think the water is used for cooling the plant and so a lot of wildlife kind of come around the warm water. Anyway, it's called Electric Beach. And this colorway is just so pretty because it has all these teals and pops of neon and it just goes with a lot of different colors and I think it appeals to a lot of different tastes as well. So it's not like an overly um, warm colorway or cool colorway and it's not like super crazy speckled but it has enough speckles to kind of give interest. So I love this colorway though. I think it's so pretty and it fades so well with other um, with other colorways. So this one's Electric Beach. This has always been a very popular colorway. And then my other one is um, a town in Hawaii actually and it's called Makaha and this is really quite a popular colorway. It's just a really pretty blend of several different blues and it has some kind of unusual pops of speckles, like there's some orange in there, um, some neon green, as well as some other tonal speckles, but uh, this one's always just been very popular and um, yeah, maybe because it's been around for a long time, I don't know. But yeah, definitely these two, Electric Beach and Makaha probably are some of the favorites. The next question is, what is a yarn that you weren't happy with the first time you created it, but now you love it? I really had to think about this question because a lot of the colorways I've created, I I don't know, I've been really happy with. They're always like a happy surprise, like, wow, this is actually really good. I really like it. <laughs> but there is one, and it's also quite an old colorway but this one's called pineapple flower and um it was inspired by a photo i took of a pineapple plant uh as it was growing and pineapple plants take forever to grow like from the the flower which looks like their stem up to a pineapple is like 18 months i mean it's quite a long time but the flower itself is kind of the, the top of the stem and it's beautiful. It has like peaches and pinks and greens. And so that was my inspiration for this yarn. And I remember when I was speckling this yarn, and I'll give you a close up to show you, but I used a, a purple dye and Back then, this is when I very first started dyeing yarn, I didn't realize that dye splits. And so when you have a color like purple, a lot of times, obviously it's made up of, you know, red and blue, I guess that's what purple is. But a lot of different dyes will split, which means that their separate colors actually manifest themselves on the yarn. So I'll just give you a really good example. This is, kind of what I am referring to right here. This purple has actually split into red and blue and it comes together and I think it looks really, really pretty on this yarn. And obviously if I didn't think it looked pretty, I could have changed it. I mean, back then when I was dyeing yarn, I was dyeing maybe two at a time and so it would have been a really easy fix the next batch just to speckle it a different way. But I think it just added, I don't know if it added kind of the earthy, to the earthiness of it. And um, I just thought it made it feel really unique. And so I kept it and ever since then, um, this is, I've dyed this recently and I just love it. I really, really love this colorway. And I love it too because you can, pair it with some of these um, 
these other colors that maybe normally you wouldn't put together and it looks so pretty so these are two of my other colors pale peach and glowworm and they look really really pretty together I think now I will say these are not normally colors that I would gravitate towards at all and I just absolutely love this trio so it just goes to show you sometimes you have happy accidents and <laughs> it all works out a lot of times and you know if it doesn't you can always add different layers or um, over dye it with a darker color but I really really liked this colorway a lot so the next question is uh, do you knit English or continental do you ever want to change it up or want to change the way you knit and so I I have to go back in my history a little bit. I actually taught myself how to knit from books. <laughs> so I didn't really have um, the luxury because it was just pre-YouTube. It was pre, you know, all these awesome tutorial videos that are out there now. And so I didn't really know what I was doing. And so um, I was coming from, I was a crocheter and I was going to knitting and, um, and so when I crocheted, I always held my, or tensioned my yarn in my left hand. And so it was just natural for me to tension my yarn in my left hand while knitting as well. And I didn't realize that was kind of a thing. That was a different way to knit. It just didn't really occur to me. It was just the way that I felt like knitting. And I think the books, and I don't remember exactly what books I had that taught me how to knit, but I don't remember the books actually saying, this is how you should tension yarn. It was basically just, this is a knit stitch, this is a purl stitch. And it just showed like a close up of the tips of the needles where the yarn goes. <laughs> so anything like where your hands are supposed to go, anything like that wasn't even mentioned. So um, ever since then, I have knit that way and I, find it great for me. I don't have any problems with it. Um, I've heard from other knitters that it is, it's faster because there's less movement. You're not throwing the yarn over with your right hand, which I guess maybe that would be a little different with if you were left, left or right handed. I'm not really sure how that works, but basically when I knit, I just pick up the strand of yarn and um, I find that it works for me. I haven't really thought about changing just because, like I said, it works for me. Though I do, I have done um, different stranded knitting where I hold yarn or attention yarn in each finger. So if there's two colors, um, I will use both fingers to do different colors. And um, that's a really fun challenge. I've actually really, really enjoyed that. And um, it's definitely a challenge, but yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed doing that. So I should really do some more stranded color work, but you know, I'm sure I'll get there. <laughs> and then the next question is, who is your favorite designer? So I don't know, gosh, there's so many great, great designers out there and creative people. I will say I have been on a Heidi Kermeyer kick for my sweaters. So she, she designed this sweater as well as another sweater I knit in my Cook Pine colorway. What was that called? I can't even remember now. Um, but she's a great designer just because her fit is really great. And another person I really like for sweaters is Marie Green from Olive Knits because she has this really great shaping on her shoulders that fits my shoulders really well. And so she's done some like four day knit along sweater making like she did the beekeeper cardigan I think was a really popular design of hers and I've really wanted to do some more of her designs because they fit the shoulders just have a really really great fit so I would say for sweaters probably those two um I would say for shawls I'm gonna have to go with Stephen West which is probably like the most popular <laughs> he's probably the most popular designer out there his creativity is just off the charts and um, the way that he writes patterns are his mind I feel like is just in another 
dimension. Like it's just amazing to knit with his patterns and to see what he comes up with. Absolutely amazing and um, his creativity. I just appreciate his creativity so much. And so yeah, I would have to say for shawls, his shawls are crazy awesome. Love his knitting. And then for socks, I would have to go with the crazy sock lady, Kay Litton, because um, I love her patterns. I love her as a person. She's just a great person. And But her sock patterns, and she has fingerless mitt patterns, they're easy, they're so clear. And um, I just love that she's so into socks, you know? Like someone who is writing patterns and creating these patterns and they just love what they do. It's so inspiring and it's so contagious. Like I always want to knit socks when I watch her podcasts. <laughs> but yeah, it's I would definitely say for socks, she is like top top designer. Love her so much. So the last question is what advice do you have for someone who wants to start dyeing yarn? I think I would say um, you know, just, I think with any kind of craft, just try it out, you know, get, there's some really great bare yarn. I mean, it's so easy to find bare yarn now. When I first started out, even though I haven't been dying forever, it was just a little more challenging. And I feel like, uh, there's so many ind indie dyers out there now that the, um, availability of yarn is a lot easier to find. And so... You know, I would probably go to Knit Picks, pick up some bare yarn. Um, I think they even have some dyes there, which is so cool. Um, when, honestly, when I first started dyeing yarn, I did it because I couldn't find certain colorways and certain patterns. And so I started experimenting with uh, Kool-Aid <laughs> and food dyes and also Easter egg pellets, like the Easter egg dyes and just kind of worked up from there. And I just started experimenting, knitting things for my kids. You know, back then I think I had one or two children. And so it was, I guess it was a little easier to dye yarn, but um, just try it out, stick with the color wheel. So look at the color wheel and see what colors are next to each other. So if they blend together, you're not gonna go wrong. And just don't be hard on yourself, you know, just experiment and, I'm sure there are so many resources on YouTube also. So just do a search on YouTube and, you know, read as much as you can, um, watch as much as you can. And also I would say like, just be true to yourself. So if you really, really love dying and that's something that maybe you want to get into and maybe sell. Maybe you're doing it for yourself, but you want to sell some extra skeins of yarn. That's totally understandable because once you start dying, you have a lot. <laughs> and so um, I would say, you know, don't, don't copy, don't mimic other people. Find your own style because that's what's going to make you the happiest and is going to bring you the most fulfillment in any craft that you do, really. Um, I think that we all can provide so much to the yarn world, the knitting and crocheting community, if we just um, kind of like find our niche, you know, and find our, our own talents and, um, yeah, so I would say just experiment and watch and learn as much as you can. Thanks so much, Natalie, for sending those questions and collabing with me on this video. It was really fun. I've never done a Q&A before, so it was a really fun chance to just uh, chat a little bit about those questions. It was really fun, so thanks for that. And thank you for joining me for this podcast. If you liked it, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe and it will be next week before I see you again. So hope you have a really, really great week and get lots of crafting done and really enjoy it so much. But until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.